Uh, my name is Zishan, and I work as a cloud data engineer at Google, helping customers build their data pipelines on Dataflow using the Beam SDK. So today I'll be talking about uh, how you can cache data in Dataflow and what are the options that Beam SDK provide for you to be able to do that. And um, what are the performance implication of some of these options uh, specific for Dataflow? So before we start, I just want to quickly uh, touch upon what exactly a cache is. So cache is essentially a copy of an external data that's stored locally to your data pipelines. And there could be several reasons why you may want to do that. For example, you may want to avoid um, a lot of external uh, calls to your main storage. Uh, this could be also because there is more added latency when you make a call to an external system but also because your external systems may have some limitations on how many calls um, it can serve. So it makes sense to essentially have a local cache or a copy of that data to your data pipelines so that you can avoid those expensive calls. And then this also helps you have um, lower latency and throughput. Uh, the trade-off here being is that your data can be stale. Uh, and in some cases, that's fine because maybe your underlying data doesn't change that frequently and you're fine with the uh, performance improvement that you get by having a local cache. So if you look at the Beam SDK, uh, there are mainly three sort of options that you can leverage to maintain some sort of a cache in Dataflow. So uh, the two ones are uh, two cache which are in memory uh, is the side input and then the uh, shared class. And the third option is a stateful DoFM. So let's go uh, to what exactly side input is. So in the Beam SDK, side input is essentially an additional input that you can pass to your DoFN. Uh, and each element of your main P collection has access to the entire side input. So, um, and, and this side input can also be um, a copy of um, an external data storage from maybe BigQuery or maybe files from GCS. So now instead of making calls to a big table or a big query of files in GCS, you can actually uh, do a local lookup in the data flow uh, by using side inputs. So here we see that, uh, sorry. So here we see that we have the main input here and then you have a side input which is coming from a different source and that's being used to maybe do some data enrichment and then um, it goes downstream. So that's the main input. Um, we, you may have maybe a input from a PubSub or maybe files from GCS. And uh, in the Beam world, if you want to apply any transformation, you would essentially apply a function um, to the input. You will pipe that input, and you get an output. So that's a very simple uh, Beam way of doing writing pipelines. Now, in the case of side input, you essentially have a main input here. And then you have an additional P collection, uh, which is called the side input. And this could be from a different source. So for example, maybe files in GCS. And then when you pass it um, to the function for processing, you can actually pass both the side input as an I triple, for example, here. And then also uh, you pipe the main input P collection. So this way you can actually um, pass um, an additional P collection as a side input uh, to your data flow uh, pipelines. Now, um, side inputs can be of multiple types. Um, they could be singleton. Uh, that means it's just one value. It could be a list. Uh, it could be an I triple. Uh, it could be a map, which is essentially a key value pair. Or it could be a multi map, uh, which is essentially a key with an I triple. So, uh, when we talk about data flow, there are a few considerations that uh, we have to keep in mind when we are dealing with uh, side inputs. Uh, and this is especially important for streaming jobs. So um, for streaming jobs that don't use a streaming engine, the side input is actually stored in memory. So this means that the size of your side input is limited by the memory on your worker machine. And for Java and Python, there is a slight difference is that in Java, you have one copy of the side input per worker, versus in Python, you have one copy per vCPU. So for example, if you have a two-core machine, uh, in Python, you will actually have two copies of that side input. So something to be mindful of uh, when you are uh, using side inputs in Dataflow. 
The other um, thing also that's important is that uh, for streaming jobs that are using a uh, streaming engine, so there is actually a maximum limit of 80 MB. So your site input size cannot be more than 80 MB. And um, this is something that's fairly low that I agree. Uh, and there are some conversations on uh, how we can improve this. Um, and typically for any pipeline, we uh, recommend that the site input size should not be really large. It should be fairly small. Uh, typically, less than 1 GB is something that we would say is a small size, and you can get decent performance uh, with a site input of that size. Uh, now, the other option is uh, the Beam shared class. Now, if you look at uh, any processing in Beam, it's ma uh, mainly expressed as uh, do offense. And do offense actually have multiple methods that are invoked at uh, different stages of the life of the do FN. So the first method that's so you, you have a bunch of uh, you have a bunch of methods here and they're uh, invoked uh, sequentially. So when the first in, when a do FN instance is created, the first method that's uh, instantiated is the setup method. And then uh, we know that each uh, DoFN actually processes elements in small batch sizes that are called bundles. So before the processing of that bundle starts, you have uh, a start bundle method. And then you have the process uh, element method, which is uh, executed for each element uh, in the bundle. And then you have the finish bundle, which is executed after uh, processing of one bundle finishes. And then you have the teardown, which is executed once uh, the do FN is supposed to be discarded uh, and cleaned up. Now, if you uh, define or if you have any object defined in any of these methods in the do FN, that object is created um, once for each do FN. Now, in Dataflow, you could have multiple do FNs running on the worker. So if we um, Look at this table, um, and these numbers are fairly like they're subject to change anytime. But uh, as of now, as we speak, um, we essentially have uh, like these many do FNs running per vCPU, and it differs between batch and streaming job. It also differs between streaming engine and without streaming engine. So, if we take an example of uh, let's say Python job, you essentially have uh, 12 do FNs that are running uh, per vCPU. Now, if you create um, a very large in-memory object in any of the methods of the DoFN, you essentially have these many uh, copies of that uh, in-memory object. Now, if you were to share, like if there was some way you can share that object across multiple threads, across multiple DoFN, it's uh, very memory efficient. And that's what the shared class in the Beam provides. So uh, if you look here, uh, this is a library that's provided by the Beam. You essentially uh, pass a shared handler here, and uh, you apply the speed transform, and you pass it uh, to this uh, do FN here. And uh, let's say we are building a very large list here. Now, this list, uh, because we are uh, passing a shared handler, is essentially shared across uh, all the threads in one process. So uh, if we were going back to the slide, for the use case where you are maybe running a, stre uh, a streaming Python job, instead of having 12 copies of that in-memory object, you would essentially have just one copy of that object in your data flow. So this is another way you can uh, essentially have an in-memory object uh, that you can share across threads um, and maintain some local cache in data flow. Uh, any questions so far? Sure. Uh, so you're showing the example in Python, you have a shared object. Uh, is the analogous one in, um, in Java just to have a, a static uh, singleton variable? Right, right. Okay. So yeah, I think uh, we don't have one in Java, but it should be fairly easy to implement. Uh, yeah. Uh, any other questions? I was just wondering, yeah, you mentioned there was a size limit on side inputs, but is there a sort of recommended size limit on this or? Oh, uh, for, uh, for, no. Uh, so, so because this is an 
in-memory objects, you essentially have to, uh, it, it, sh it should fit in worker's memory. Uh, and based on how many copies of that object are, which depends on the number of cores, um, yeah, so it depends on the worker memory. So you, if you have a large uh, in-memory object, you can obviously like upscale the worker size uh, to have that. Uh, to add on this, I do remember reading in an internal thread that there is a limit on the size of the side input. And I also, uh, there was the comment that it's not a best practice to have huge side input because you're like kind of killing the whole purpose of distributing the work. Yeah. So typically, if you have a side input that's fairly large, it's probably a signal that you should reconsider the pipeline design and maybe uh, think about some other uh, ways which it could be more parallelized and distributed. All right, I'll take the other questions at the end of the slide. Yeah. Um, all right. So the third, uh, the the last option that the Bean SDK provide is the stateful uh, do offense. So um, if you look at any. Um, any DoFN, it's technically stateless, so you don't maintain any state uh, in the DoFN. But the stateful DoFN actually allows you to maintain a state, which is per key per window. So this means that for each key in a window, you can maintain uh, something uh, that you can reuse for other elements. So, so that's a way of what you can do uh, using the stateful uh, DoFNs to sort of create a cache. And uh, the way it's helpful is that uh, for example, here, um, so we have a we have a DoFN, and then we are maintaining a state for each key and each window. Now, instead of doing a lookup to an external database directly for each element, you are essentially doing a lookup in the state. And if you get a value, uh, you don't do a lookup to the external table, and you just uh, continue the processing. And only if you cannot find a hit in the intern in the state would you do an external lookup? So um, let's think of an example where um, we have uh, a stream of data coming uh, with customer ID as a key. And um, you are trying to do some lookup in BigQuery or Bigtable for each of those customer ID. Now, with this kind of an architecture, what you would do is that uh, you will maintain a state uh, for each user ID in each window. Let's say we have a one hour window. So if you have a customer ID with the same uh, with the same customer ID in that window, you can actually uh, get a result from the state rather than doing expensive uh, call to the external database. So because everything is within the data flow system as it is, it's much faster um, and uh, you probably will have a much lower latency and performance. Um, so a few things to keep in mind uh, when we Think about stateful uh, do offense in data flow. So for, for, uh, for bad jobs, the state is stored in workers, worker memory. For streaming jobs that are using streaming engine, it is stored at streaming engine. Um, and essentially, uh, you can have a, like an almost technically unbounded size of the state. So uh, yeah, so, so it's a fairly scalable architecture. Um, if you are using streaming engine in streaming jobs. The other uh, thing to keep in mind is that if you are using a streaming job without streaming engine, then the all the state is stored in workers uh, disk. So your state cannot exceed the disk capacity. And if it happens, um, you would get an error that there's no space left in on the device. So um, yeah, some considerations for having state stateful do FNs in data flow. And then third, the last option is having an external cache. So GCP provides a service called memory store, which is a fully managed version of Redis or uh, memcache that you can also use uh, to create some cache. Uh, obviously, this would not be part of data flow um, because it's an external cache. But you have an option that you can consider probably. Uh, with that, yeah, I just want to thank uh, Pratap for uh, helping me with this uh, presentation um, and uh, happy to answer any questions if you have.